You're one of the few reporters that has a good relationship with Kevin Durant. Uh, that franchise is bleeped on how it is that they're built over the next couple of years. And Booker was yelling at the T-Wolves bench, we play team ball, we share the ball. And then as soon as the Suns are eliminated, it's reported that Kevin Durant was unhappy with his role in that offense. What is true about Kevin Durant in Phoenix? What is not true about Kevin Durant in terms of public perception? Well, I talked to him, what, the last time I talked to him, probably a month ago. And he, he told me how he's enjoying the process of trying to get acclimated to playing alongside Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. He enjoys it. One thing about KD, like, he likes new challenges. And he, he considers himself a basketball aficionado. And so with that, he embraces new paths. And this is no different. Like, this is something he wants to conquer. He wants to... He wants to, you know, bring the Suns a championship and do it with those two guys. Now, with that being said, have there been times this season where he's been maybe a little unsettled in his role and how he's being used? Yes, because he's being used differently. His his points, um, excuse me, his field goal attempts are down. Um, he's still efficient, still one of the most efficient players we have in this league. So, yeah, there's been some frustration at times, but, you know, Bradley Beal, Shares the same frustration. You know, I know he had nine points um, in the closeout game. The Timberwolves closeout game shot shot badly. There's a clip of him. As soon as he fouls out, Vogel extends his hand for a high five, and then Bill kind of like sh shoves his hand out the way. Not a good look. Um, as far as Vogel, what I will say is this, is that um, I know Frank Vogel, Personally, I know he, he wanted a point guard on that roster. And the, the front office believed that bringing a point guard over would take the ball out of the hands of Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, and Kevin Durant. And so, you know, I think they didn't see so eye to eye in that So that's the end regard. of that front office. That owner's <laughs> not going to sit around and tolerate very much. I think something's going to happen. I don't know if, whether it's the front office or it's the, the coach – so, something's going to happen. But nothing can happen with the players. Ne They're locked nothing, in. Never, never. Right. Especially, you know, Bradley, Bradley Beal still has that no-trade clause. You know, they $50 million a piece for those three around there. So, no, nah, nothing can happen to those guys. But they're, they're a top-heavy team. So, they have to find some balance going into next season. They're bleeped. They want to be they're legit. bleeped. Yeah. No, yeah. For, no, no draft picks no draft the picks rest like, of the decade. Yeah. And it's, Anthony Edwards is now in the division, and OKC is the youngest team in the league, and it's, it's done. Like, they made all of those moves. They're not going to be able to fix that. The old people are out in the NBA. It's the young people's time. Yeah, and the thing is, like, even with the Phoenix, you know, Lakers, they're going to have a similar – look like they may have a similar situation where they may be contemplating a, a change at the head coaching got job. And, look, whether it's valid or not, I don't know. But what I will say is – who else is out there? Who else is out there that's going to take on Phoenix, take them to the next level? Who's out, who's out there for Belichick. the Lakers? <laughs> Not a bad idea. 